Hello. Say hello to my subscribers right there. Uh, hey, we we part of the company. We what? We part of that guy right there. It's the best mechanic there. Yeah, and yeah, uh, now he's an influencer in no. YouTube. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanics in the D &D. What's up, my guys? This is Holmes Law. My name is Mel, and today we're gonna be going over parallel kicks. Okay mostly with hand benders, but I will touch upon how to, how to do parallel kicks with hydraulic benders a little bit. I will go into some details. I won't be actually able to show you how to do it with the hydraulic bender in this video, but I will get into it in another video. Like I said before, this is gonna be a couple of you know short series into parallel kicks okay this will be the first video of a couple of you know videos about parallel kicks now without further ado i'm going to tell you what i'm going to be getting into i'm going to be showing you how to do parallel kicks with 30 45 and 60 degree bends also i'll be showing you how to do 45 degree kicks with different size conduits okay now without any more i'm going to show you how to actually do this with three quarter pipe even though it doesn't matter you know what size it all applies the same way okay this is all this it basically applies to any size conduit so just because I'm showing you a three quarter, it doesn't mean that this only applies to three quarter conduit, okay? You can apply it to any size conduit, okay? So now, without any more interruptions, let's start by actually letting me show you how we're gonna lay this conduit out. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you in diagrams okay something sort of like this paper that i have in my hand on how to lay out other degree parallel kicks okay i will show you on the computer all right this is a printout just a little something on to show you you know what it is that we're trying to do here okay so just for the sake of the video we're gonna say that this here is a panel. This is the top view of everything, you know, the conduits and everything. Now, for this diagram, we're working with 30 degree kicks, okay? Two inch spacing in between conduits from center to center and the spacing towards the actual enclosure or the panel or whatever you would like it to be. It's gonna be four inch spacing between the conduits okay that's how it actually works when you're doing kicks all right now for 30 degree kicks okay it works almost like offsets all right the multiplier for 30 degree is two okay so if you want two inch spacing with 30 degree bends Okay, towards the front here, you're gonna end up getting four inch spacing. That's just how it works, okay? Now, also with that said, if you want 30 degree kicks, okay, and you want your kicks to line up at a certain, you know, spot, let's just say you have to do a 10 inch kick for your first, let's start out with the first conduit. Your kick is 10 inches, okay? As you can see here in the diagram. It's 10 inches, okay? And <clears throat> whatever the case may be, all right, to get to your panel. Okay, so we're gonna measure back from the back of the 90, 20 inches. Why? Because our kick is 10 inches and, I'm, and we want 30 degree bends. What's our multiplier? Two. Two times 10, 20 inches. So for our first conduit, we're gonna mark it 20 inches back from the 90 and bend the 30. For the second conduit with two inch spacing, you know, our second kick is gonna be 12 inches because we have two inch spacing. So from the second conduit to the, to the knockout, it's gonna be 12 inches, okay? 
So the 12 times two for the 30 degree kick, you know, the multiplier is two, that's gonna give you 24 inches and so on. 28, 32, okay? So that's what we're dealing with here. So we know the multiplier for 30 degrees is two and that's the degree of bend that we're gonna use for this, for this example, okay? So now, how do we lay it out? <clears throat> it's pretty much showed in the diagram, but let's just do it in real time. Okay, we're gonna come here, put it up against the straight edge. Let's just say that we bent on 90 already, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and mark it at, hold on one second, let me grab a pencil. Let's just say we're gonna mark it at, for this example here, let's start off with, uh, let's just say we wanna do a five inch kick, okay? Only because I'm not working with that much conduit, you know, this is an example here. Let's just say for, for the sake of the video, we wanna do a five inch kick. Our multiplier would be two, two times five would be 10. Let's mark it at 10 inches. Okay, and that would be right here. All right, I'll go ahead and mark it at 10 inches, always all the way around the pipe. Now, a lot of people usually don't like to mark when they're doing kicks, okay? I'm telling you that you should always mark it, especially for kicks, okay? Because let's just say your kick needs a little more bend or kick or whatever you want to call it. You can put it back in the same place in the bender and you can go ahead and kick it as much more as you need, especially when you're working with bigger size conduit, like let's just say two and a half to four inch conduit. You want to put your mark on your pipe so that you know where to place it back in the bender, okay? Especially with hydraulic benders, you need to sometimes give it a little more, okay? You weren't accurate, you need to put it back in the bender and bend it, you know where to place it with this mark, all right? So now, now that we have our, our mark here, okay, for the five inch kick, it's gonna be 10 inches from the back of the 90. Now we can bend it at 30 degrees. Now. What I advise for you to do when you're doing kicks is, yes, you want a 30 degree kick, but it's more accurate if you actually bend it towards the measurement. So what you wanna do is you wanna place your conduit in the bender, okay? But put your ruler or your tape measure on the floor and measure and bend it to 10 inches. Okay, you wanna bend it all the way to the 10 inches instead of bending it to 30 degree. Although, even though technically, if you bend it to 30 degree, you should have a 10 degree kick. But sometimes, you know, you're off by a fraction of an, of an inch or whatever the case may be, that's why it's better if you just take it to the actual measurement instead of the degree, okay? So, that's what I actually recommend. Now next, what you wanna do is, let me move the camera over, is let's, now you wanna bend it, okay? And in order to bend it, I'm gonna show you here, you wanna place your conduit in your bender, okay? And you wanna line it up Hopefully you had chart, you charted your bender and you put a 30 degree center mark on your conduit. This mark here that I have, the first marker mark that I have here, this one here is my 30 degree mark. This is the one that comes with the bender already made. This is the actual um, notch for the 45 degree center. And this is the, uh, so the back of a 90, okay, this is the star, as you can see here. Star notch, this is my 30 degree bend, 
Okay, this is just, this is another band that I had uh, uh, set it out, charted out already. So that would be your 15 degree. Okay, and um, so I have it on the 30 center mark, and now I can put it on the floor and bend it like so. Okay. Actually, let me see. Let me see if you can actually see this. Now, I would put it on the floor like so, making sure that my 90 is straight, as you can see, and level and parallel to the floor. Okay, now with that said, I'm gonna take my ruler or tape measure and put it on the floor like so, okay? I'm gonna put it like so, seeing that my pipe is parallel, okay? And my ruler is on the floor next to it and I'm gonna go ahead and bend it to five inches, okay? Now, you wanna keep in mind, you, you wanna either, it depends, okay? If you're gonna, if you're gonna measure it five, in, 10 inches to the, I mean, excuse me, five inches to the bottom of the conduit, the center, it depends on, on you. It depends on what you measured for your knockout or whatever you measure to out in the field, okay? So you need to pay attention. Wherever you measure to is what you're gonna bend the actual conduit to. So if you measured, if you took your measurement to the back of the pipe, then that's where you need to bend this to, the back of the pipe. If you measured it to the center of the conduit, then you're gonna bend it five inches to the center of the conduit, okay? I usually like to measure it to the back of the conduit. For me, I feel like it's more accurate you know, I can tell when I'm getting to the back of the conduit instead of to the center. Sometimes you can't really tell exactly where the center is, okay? Unless you have it marked out. So, especially when you're dealing with larger conduit. Now, like I said, so I'm gonna bend it five inches to the actual bottom of the conduit and that's it. It should also be somewhere around 30 degrees when I'm done. Okay, but like I said, it's more accurate if you take it to the measurement instead of to the degrees. All right? Now, when you're doing parallel kicks, <clears throat> it's gonna look better, like I said, when you're taking it to the measurement. Okay, but with that said, all your kicks should be roughly around, if not 30 degree bends. Okay? Let's move right along. Now, now that the bend is done, Okay, you can actually see, all right, that we're gonna be have, we're gonna have roughly, actually right on five inches, okay? Let me get this into view. That's the kick, all right? I have to hold it up. Excuse me. Yeah, I have to hold that. And that's what you're looking for. Now, when you're doing parallel kicks, <clears throat> the next one would be, since I did a five inch kick, okay, my next one, I'm, let's just say that it's gonna be two inches because I want to do two inch spacing. So it's going to be seven inch kick for my next one, okay? So I would do the same process, okay? Except I'm going to add two inches, okay? Like so. I come here, put it on my straight edge, and now it's going to be seven inches 
my next kick. So seven times two equals what? 14, okay? I would come over here, mark it at 14 inches. Okay, 14 inches, and then I would bend, okay? I would bend it to 14 inches at this mark. I would place this mark on the 30 degree center of bend mark, which you should have charted out already, right here, okay? And I would bend it, okay? And that's basically it. After you bend it, you're gonna come across a bend like this and that would be your next one. So you would line them up, two inches spacing, and that gives you your perfect, you know, parallel kick. So the next one would be, let's just say, for the sake of the video, we're doing two inch spacing. So we did a five inch, a seven inch. Next would be a nine inch. Okay, because we're doing two inch spacing. Okay, so nine times two gives us 18. We would come over here to 18 and put our mark, place it again, like I said, on our center of bend mark for 30 degrees, all right, which is the one after the notch for me. If you don't know how to chart out your bender, I'll put a link in the video. I have a video that shows you how to chart it out. Okay? You place it back in the 30 degree center of bend mark on your bender. Okay? And you bend it. Okay? To 18 inches. Okay? Don't forget, more accurate is better to measure, it's better to bend it to the measurement instead of the actual degree. Okay? When you're dealing with kicks, especially parallel kicks. All right, so now that we've explained that, okay, I apologize for not being able to actually, I don't have enough conduit to show you how to do actual parallel kicks, you know, like a whole set of parallel kicks, sort of like the diagram here, okay? But in the future, when I do get more, I'm gonna actually show you by actually bending them in front of a camera and doing it, okay? But I don't think you're gonna need me to do that. I think it's explained, you know, pretty good the way that I actually explain it now. Now, what I wanna get into now is, let's just say how we're gonna bend parallel kicks with bigger conduit, okay? Now, let's just say you're dealing with a four inch pipe and you wanna bend a four inch pipe with a kick, okay? With a 90 degree stub and a kick. We're gonna make believe that this three quarter pipe is a four inch pipe, okay? And we're dealing with the hydraulic bender, okay? So what you wanna do is all the steps apply the same way, okay? The only thing you, that's gonna be different is the bender that you're gonna be using, okay? Now on the bender that you're gonna be using, the 30 degree center of bend mark is not gonna be on that bender. You have to put it there. And I'm gonna show you a clip on how to transfer and put your 30 degree mark onto that bender, okay? Now, the marks that you mark here, like let's just, on, on this paper here, on the diagram, the 20 inch mark, the 24, okay, which if you can see it, the 28 and the 32, all those marks there, that's where you're gonna place your bender, where on the bender, you're not gonna use the saddle. You need to bend it to the center of bend mark for 30 degree bends. Now, where is that? On the bender, I'm gonna explain how to actually find that and put that onto the bender on another, on another video. I just wanted you to know that your bend marks are gonna go on that part of the shoe for the bender, not on the saddle. You're not gonna bend it, you're not gonna put your mark on the saddle, you're gonna put it on the center of bend mark with hydraulic benders and electric benders when you're dealing with these kicks, okay? Now, how to actually do a kick on the hydraulic bender. 
No. Let's just say your 90 degree stub is sticking out of the actual electric bender. After you put the shoe on and everything, this part of the 90 stub is sticking out of the saddle, okay? And it's elevated off of the floor like it is right now, okay? And you want a 10 inch kick. Well, this might be common sense for a lot of you and maybe not for some others. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna measure the difference from the floor, okay? And add that to your kick, okay? So let me measure the stub, okay? And see what we have off the floor. So as you can see here, you want to be as accurate as possible. I have 30 and 3 quarters to the bottom of my conduit. To the bottom of my conduit. I have 30 and 3 quarters. That's where I'm bending my kick to. The bottom of the conduit. Okay, so I have 30 and 3 quarters. And my kick is going to be basically 10 inches. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to add... 10 inches to the 30 and 3 quarters, okay? So it's gonna be 40 and 3 quarters. So now I'm gonna bend my conduit all the way to 40 and 3 quarters, all right? And when I'm finally at 40 and 3 quarters, you don't wanna forget about spring back, okay? I don't have my protractor today, so I'm just gonna tell you what it is that you have to do. After you get to 40 and 3 quarters, which is right here, okay? After you get to 40 and three quarters to the bottom of the conduit, you wanna stop, okay? And check your protractor. Yes, you still wanna have your digital level or protractor on the actual conduit, all right? You wanna check how many degrees it is. So when you get to 40 and three quarters, right over here, you wanna check your, your, your digital level or your protractor, check what you have and add an additional two or three degrees for spring back, okay? And after the two or three degree spring back, you're done. You take it out, you remove it, you place it on the floor and you measure it, okay? And if you have a perfect bend, then you want to record, okay? You want to always write that, especially when you're dealing with the hydraulic benders or electric benders. Write that down, okay? How many degrees did you bend and how many, you know, you want to write down what the spring back was. This way you remember always what the spring back is, okay? Or you want to mark how many extra inches it gave you from the 40 and three quarters, you know, how much was your spring back? So that you know, okay, when I'm dealing with 10 inch kicks, I need to take it to, you know, an extra inch, or I gotta go an extra three degrees. That's why I'm telling you that it's always good to write these things down, you know, cause you can make an actual reference book out of it throughout your career, you know? All right, well, with that said, <clears throat> Now, I want to show you actually how to, you know, do this with different sized conduits, okay? With different sized conduits, being that I already went over. Yeah. Okay, so with different sized conduits, what I want to do is I want to show you how to actually measure for it. Everything else is the same with different size conduits when you want to do kicks, okay? The only thing you need to know is what the center to center, you know, measurement is. And basically, you just want to line them up together and make sure that you have your spacing in between them evenly. Like, let's just say if you want your spacing to be inch and a half from one conduit to another, not center to center, in between each other, then place it an inch and a half in between each other, then you can measure 
the center to center measurement. And then you can take that measurement and multiply it by whatever degree of bend you're gonna use. If you're gonna use 30, then the multiply is gonna be two. So you're gonna take that measurement and multiply it by two. That's the only thing that's different with different size conduits. If you were gonna do 45 degree bends, your multiply would be 1.4, okay? So all you need is your center to center measurement. When you're dealing with different size conduits, you can't do, you don't wanna do, you know, center to center measurements with your spacing. What you wanna do to make them all look the same is keep the same spacing in between conduits. So you'll keep it like an inch and a half in between the conduits. That makes it look a lot better, okay? Then trying to keep center to center distances the same. It won't work like that, all right? So after you spaced out, you know, you figured out what your spacing you want to be, just, you know, pretty much line, you know, those conduits on the floor, some scrap pieces or whatever, and then take a measurement from center to center, and that's what you wanna actually use with the multiplier of whatever degree bend you're gonna use or bend. And that's how you actually do parallel kicks with different size conduits, okay? Now, with that said, I know I, would, I only explained it and I couldn't show you how to do it with the hydraulic bender, but it's the same principle. The only thing you need to know that's different is that it hangs off of the floor a certain amount of inches because the bender, that's where you have to put the conduit. So just add, you know, whatever, whatever amount of kick you want to, to bend to whatever you have on your measurement from the floor to the, to the conduit. And that's it. And the most important thing, the spring back. When you get to your measurement, stop, look at your protractor and add spring back, which is somewhere between three and three degrees. It could be four degrees. It depends on what you're working with. That's why you always want to mark on your conduit where you want to kick it at. You know, this way you can, if you have to put it back in the bender, you know where to place it back in the bender and you can, you know, add a little more bend to it. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you. And uh, please don't forget to actually, you know, like, share, and subscribe, let your friends know about it. And please give me more video requests. You know, uh, you can find me on any of the social medias, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I'm there. And with that said, homies, I'm out. So the way that I get the center mark onto my bender is basically find the center on a 30 degree bend or on any bend, okay? You just put a straight edge on your, on your bend, okay? And you can mark a pencil mark across like you just see here, okay, with a straight edge. And you come on the other side and mark another another mark on it. It's gonna give you an X, okay? And then the center of that X, that's the center of your bend. You put a marker on it, you know, so that it reaches at least the side of your conduit. This way, because we're gonna put it back into the bender, okay?
that would be how you mark it, 30 degrees. See where my mark is on the pipe underneath. See, now you can see how it is. Then you transfer it over, and that's it. Okay, what's up, my guys? This is gonna be a series of videos for kicks okay because kicks is a little bit of a you know it's it's a complicated bend people think it's just a simple you know bend and that shit is over it's not especially when we're talking about parallel kicks okay so like i said it's gonna be a series of videos because um i don't want to make it a long video i could do it all in one video but um i'm starting to get the the feeling that I think it'll be better for me to put out shorter videos, you know, just put out more videos instead of one long video. So, um, yeah, that's the case. I'm going to make these just into different parts, okay? So this is going to be parallel kicks, okay? But this is going to be parallel kicks going into whether it be a panel, a junction box, whatever the case may be, but it's going to be going into an enclosure, so you can wrap your mind around that we're going to be going into an enclosure <clears throat> so what i'm speaking about now the bends that we're talking about now is just going to be dealing with actually going into the enclosure working your way back from the enclosure and working your way back so we're basically starting from the enclosure now in this part here in this video i'm not going to actually be doing any bending at all um, for the video, I'm just going to be showing you these diagrams that I actually put together. And um, excuse me if, you know, in part of me, if you really can't see them too well, um, hopefully you can. Either way, they're here. Uh, let's work with them. So let's start it off, okay? Now, something that I do want to say really quick is that, you know, like I was saying before, parallel kicks are complicated bends okay if you don't get one of the part if you if you make a mistake with one of the parts you know everything is just gonna come out wrong all right with parallel kicks they have to be parallel at all points along the the conduit okay the spacing between the conduits should be equal all right and the center of the bend or the kick or whatever should align should be aligned okay with that said <clears throat> if anything is not you know met with those three conditions then you know it's it's not parallel they're not parallel kicks they, they won't come out looking nice and pretty okay now you as you see in the diagram here okay i have this you, you could actually tell the triangle here you know it's it's pretty much <clears throat> you know basic trigonometry okay so what i put together here is a basic 30 degree bend kick parallel all right now <clears throat> if you want to use which is easy it's the easiest a 30 degree bend all right let's just say that you have this wall here which I just drew and I put together. This is a wall. This line right here is a wall. Our first conduit from the center is 10 inches away. All right? It's 10 inches away from the actual junction box. I'm sorry. This is not a wall. Pardon me. Uh, excuse me. This is not the wall. That's another diagram. This is not a wall. It's just 10 inches away from the enclosure, the first hole, the first knockout. Okay, it's 10 inches from center of the conduit to the center of the hole. It's 10 inches away. Okay. Now, the way that we do parallel kicks is almost the same as offsets. Okay, you have multipliers that you can use. <clears throat> So for this case, we're going to use a 30 degree bend, which the multiplier comes out being two. So what you would do is you would take your measurement, okay, 
from the 90, okay, in this case, you would either take it from the center, from the center of the actual conduit, and you would go 20 inches back because your kick is 10 inches. So your multiplier for a 30 degree bend is two. So that would equal 20 inches. Okay, now for the sake of when you're taking the measurements, you can take it from the back of the 90. Okay, now when you take your measurement, you're just going to go 20 inches and mark your conduit. Okay, and that's where you're going to make your bend. Now, an important note for you to know is that when you're making this bend and you're using a hand bender, if you use the arrow, it's not going to come out right. Okay? <clears throat> you need to get the center of a 30 degree bend. So you have to chart your bender. You have to mark on your bender where the 30 degree center is going to be at so your bender should be already charted if you haven't done that you're going to need to do that in order to do these bends correctly <clears throat> now after you bend it correctly on the 30 degree center mark on your bender you're done okay you're going to have a 10 degree a 10 inch bend okay at 20 inches that's where your kick is going to be at, 20 inches, okay? But it's going to be a 10-inch kick. Now, what most people don't understand is that, you know, most electricians think that you can actually, you know, keep the same spacing in the enclosure and keep it all the same as far as where all the kicks are too. You can't have... A two inch spacing and then actually have a two inch spacing as well with your 90s going into the box it's just not possible if you can see in the diagram here it's just not gonna work all right so if you're working your way back from the enclosure what you want to do is if you have like in this example I have a the box is 16 inches wide Okay, so I'm trying to make all my conduits fit. So I calculated that I want my spacings to be center to center four inches. So basically that made my conduits fit perfectly. Okay, and this was all calculated. So I calculated that with a two inch spacing, I could actually have my 90s go in with a four inch center to center inside the box okay by using the multiplier for the 30 degree band which is two if you see this triangle here it shows you the two inch spacing okay with a 30 degree bend is going to give you a four inch spacing center to center on the on the actual where the 90s are okay I think that makes it self-explanatory. It's pretty well explained, right? So a 30 degree bend, you know, that, that would be the easiest way, the easiest, you know, multiplier to use. But with that said, if you have a smaller box, a smaller enclosure <clears throat> or a panel that's smaller and you need to fit them in with kicks, then you could also use 45 degrees, which the multiplier would be 1.4 or you could use a 60 degree okay and so on now as you see here parallel bends okay so the next one would be a 12 inch kick and then a 14 inch kick and then a 16 inch kick okay and so on now for the 12 inch kick the same thing applies okay my multiplier is 2 so I have an answer of 24 inches from my 90 I'm going to measure back 24 inches and bend it at the center of the 30 degree mark that'll give me a 12 inch kick 
Okay? Now, with that said, <clears throat> sometimes, you know, it's more accurate to bend kicks by measuring instead of using the degrees. Even though I'm telling you to use, I mean, you're going to bend the 30 degree kick, you should still put your ruler on it and measure out your kick to 12 inches, okay? It will it looks better that way and sometimes it's more accurate. Actually, it's not sometimes. It's more accurate that way to do that. So that's the best way to do your actual kicks. Now, the next one would be a 16 inch inch kick. Actually, no, I'm sorry, the 14 inch kick, which on that one, it's the same thing. You have a two in, a two um, a multiplier of two. Okay, that's gonna give you a 28 inch value. You're gonna measure back from the 90, 28 inches, and do the same thing. Bend it on the center of the 30 degree bend. Okay, <clears throat> measure it out. Like I said, you know, it's more accurate that way than using a degree. Okay, and as you keep doing these bends, you're gonna see you, you'll be, you'll get your four inch sp um, spacing by the enclosure. You'll keep a two inch spacing in between conduits from center to center. Okay, and that's just an easy way to do it. All right. Now, with that said, I want to say that when you're dealing with larger conduits, okay, the same thing applies. You need to put it on the set. You have to chart your bend is what I'm actually trying to say. Okay. When it, if, if you're using the, um, the table bender, the, the, the cyclone, you know, whichever bender you're using, you have to have the center mark for the 30 degrees. <clears throat> okay? It'll come out better that way. So, with that said, <clears throat> we can move along to the next one. This is just a diagram here showing you from the last diagram your four inch spacing in between on the enclosure, okay? This triangle here is, is showing you, you know, the actual trigonometry of it, okay? It gives you the four inch, the 30 degrees with the actual multiplier, you know, and the two inch spacing is gonna give you, you know, all of these figures here, okay? A four inch spacing at the panel or the enclosure with two inch spacing in between conduits, okay? These are the measurements of the junction boxes and you also have to take into account the strut as always, okay? <clears throat> now, like I was saying before with larger conduits or whatever bender you're using, if it's not a hand bender and it's a hydraulic bender, you want to chart that out and try to get the center of a 30 degree or whatever degree bends you're going to actually use <clears throat> and bend them, you know, accordingly. Now, or else they're, they're not going to come out accurate is basically what I'm saying. And when you, oh, another tip is when you're actually using the electronical benders or the hydraulic bender okay <clears throat> what you have to do to measure a kick okay being that your pipe is going to be off the floor you want to take your ruler or tape measure okay after you're done leveling out your conduit okay you can watch my videos on how to use the actual table bender um and you can you know, I'll put a link in the description for that video. <clears throat> now, after you're done, you know, using your tape measure and you're done leveling out the, the, the conduit and it's all snugged up and leveled out as best as possible, <clears throat> you actually take your tape measure and you measure what you have from the floor to whether you're somebody that measures from the bottom of the pipe, the center, or whatever the case may be, you take a measurement from the bottom or the center, whatever measurement you're going to take it from, and you 
take that measurement and you don't and you actually write it down or just memorize that okay and then add that value to the amount of kick that you need if i need a two inch kick and my measurement from the floor to the bottom of my pipe is 10 inches and i need a two inch kick then when i'm actually bending it i need to take my bend to 12 inches okay so that's how you measure for a bend on the electric bender or the hydraulic bender okay and make sure that your 90 is level you have to make sure your 90 is level when you're met when you're actually doing kicks on these electric and hydraulic benders so level it out make sure your 90 is level and parallel to the floor then take your measurement to see how much you have from the floor to the bottom or the center of your pipe and then add on how much kick you need and that's where you want to take your bend to okay i'm going to show more examples of that in other videos <clears throat> now back to the diagram with this 45 degree kick over here we have the same situation okay from the first conduit to the first knockout enclosure to the enclosure we have 10 inches okay and we're gonna use 45 degree kicks okay now with that said <clears throat> I don't have the um the actual figures here the values here but with that said we can actually get that going now I'll take out my calculator and we'll get the figures so now with a 10 inch kick okay and we're using 45s I would have to take the measurement from the back of my 90 and and mark it at the center of where I'm gonna actually bend and let's see what what that value is gonna be so it's 10 times for the, the, the multiplier for 45 would be 1.4 we would go back 14 inches from the 90 and we would bend it at the center of bend if this is a hand bender you would use your notch your the center of the bend okay if it's an actual hydraulic or electric bender you would have to actually put it at the center of a 45 which you would have to chart that out you know <clears throat> get a 45 make a 45 degree bend you know mark it put it back on the shoe and and mark it and transfer that mark onto the shoe now you know where your center of your 45 is and that's where you want to bend it at okay so now <clears throat> parallel kicks now we have two inches in between same thing applies for the next one now since we have a 12 inch kick for this one what we're going to do is same thing 12 times 1.4 which gives us 16 and 7 8 so we're going to go back measure back from the 90 16 and 7 8 and we're going to bend it at the center of the 45 okay and that'll give us nice clean parallel kicks two inches of, uh, apart and at the enclosure it's going to be different it's going to be a little tighter now so you could use a smaller box with 45 degree kicks okay with this box we're using a 12 inch box and our spacing in between in between um 90s is going to be 2 and 13 16 of an inch okay so as you can see we can use the smaller boxes as our degrees go up and we're using tighter kicks all right and we move moving right along okay so with a 14 inch kick because uh that's what's next 14 inch we would go 14 times 1.4 that would give us basically 19 and 5 eighths for the next one and for a 16 inch it would give us 22 and 3 eighths okay so those would be all the values that we would go and mark on our pipes and we would bend them at 45 degrees but like i said it's more accurate to actually measure 
So the values that I just gave you, the last one was 22 and 3 eighths. It would be better, okay, to put your pipe on the center of the 45 degree mark and bend it, not at 45, but at actually holding the tape measure and bending it at 22 and 3 eighths because it's more accurate that way. I mean, you can, I'm not saying you can't, you can actually go and bend it at 45 degrees and it should, you know, hit your 22 and 3 eighths. But sometimes you'll be a little off and it's better to be off on degrees than on your measurement. Okay, because your measurements was going to give you your two inch spacing perfectly, you know, and it's going to make everything align perfectly. And it'll also <clears throat> make sure that you get your 90s into your knockouts correctly. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, if you're dealing with larger conduits, same thing. Okay, you, you want to measure your kicks out. That's more importantly, but there is another tip that you need to know as far as when you're dealing with larger conduits. You have spring back. You also have spring back with, you know, um, can benders, but not as much as the as the actual hydraulic and electric benders. So a tip for you is when you're measuring your actual kick let's just say you're doing a 22 and 3 8 kick on a four inch conduit what you want to do is <clears throat> measure out your 22 and 3 8 okay and when you get to your 22 and 3 8 you also want to have a po uh, the, your protractor or your digital level on your conduit okay and when you're done and you get to that 22 and 3 eighths, you wanna take a look at your digital level or your protractor, okay? And you wanna add on to that a couple of degrees for the spring back, okay? So if you're dealing with like a 45 degree uh, um, kick, you might wanna add a degree or two for the spring back. Okay, and like I always tell everybody when they're dealing with larger pipe and they're dealing with the actual electric bender or the hydraulic bender, if you get a perfect degree kick, you know, always record these, you know, record these values, you know what I'm saying? Because then you could always go back to them, you know, whether it's on a, a notebook or a phone and you could always go back to them and, and you could look it up, you know, oh, I did a 45 degree kick and I had to take it to 47 degrees. You know, so it helps, you know, write these notes down. I have a book of, of all, you know, all this information. And all I have to do is I just, you know, put some info. If I'm dealing with three inch pipe or whatever the case may be, because I have it at home. <clears throat> if I'm dealing with three inch or four inch, I put the information, I take pictures of it. I put it on my phone and, and that's, the, that's it, you know. But um, basically, so that's what you want to do with larger conduits, okay, when you're dealing with kicks because you have spring back, okay. So what I do is, since I'm dealing with a measurement, is I take a look, when I'm done with my kick, I take a look at my protractor and I add a degree or two for the spring back. <clears throat> I take the conduit out, I measure it, and this way, if I still have to put it back and bend it a little more then i'll do so but then i'll i'll remember how much more i had to bend it and then on my next one i already know how much i have to add for spring back okay so that's that now the next diagram that i have for you is gonna be a 60 degree so i guess now you're getting the hang of it this is just for the enclosures, you know, but it works for, you know, it, it works for almost anything else as well, too. If you're going into a coupling or, if, you know, if you're going through, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, uh, an obstruction or whatever the case may be. If you're doing all parallel bends, it doesn't have to be an enclosure or anything. 
<clears throat> but you're getting the hang of it now. See, so now with a 60 degree bend, what we have, we can use a smaller enclosure, a 10 inch enclosure with spacing of two and five sixteenths in between. Okay, actually, this is a typo, I believe. Yep, that's a typo. But anyhow, <clears throat> so now with a 10 inch actual kick, okay, with 60 degree bends, all right, with 60 degree bends, let's do the calculation. 10 times 1.155 equals 11 and a half. So 11 and a half inches we would measure from the back of our 90s, mark it and bend it at 60 degrees. You would have to use again, the center mark of a 60 degree bend. Okay, whether it be a, a electronic bender, hydraulic or a hand bender. Okay. <clears throat> And for the next one, it would be 12 inches. And that would be, let's do the calculation for that, times 1.155 equals 13 and 7 eighths of an inch. You would measure back and bend on the center again, okay? So, as you can see, you can tell pretty much, you know, it's the same thing as an offset. You're using all the multipliers the same way, basically. Okay. That's it. Basically, everything is basically the same. Okay. As you use, you know, larger degree bends, you know, towards the front of the 90s, you know, it gets narrower. Okay, it gets narrower, but at the same time, you're keeping your two inch spacing or whatever type of spacing that you, you plan on keeping, you know, either way. So now I have another diagram that I want to show you. I'm going to move along because this is all basically the same. <clears throat> just the degrees are changing, you know, by now you should get the hang of it With this one here. This is a little different. Let's just say that you have different size conduits And you, you want to do parallel kicks with all of them Okay, this is a little different. It's a little trickier Okay, if you have four different sizes, let's just say what you want to do is You, you, you don't want to keep the same spacing between center to center. What you want to do is just keep the same spacing in between conduits. So let's just say from wall to wall, you want to have inch and a half. Same thing with this one, wall to wall, inch and a half, not from center to center, okay? <clears throat> Basically, and let's just say we want to use 45 degree kicks. Now, you're going to have inch and a half in between these conduits, not from center to center, but from wall to wall. Okay. What you want to do is, you know, you can place your conduits on the floor or you can find the outside diameter yourself and do the math. Either way, whatever's the best way for you, whatever you can do out in the field. But what you want to do is, <clears throat> you want to find the spacing <clears throat> from center to center with the inch and a half in between for each and every one of these conduits okay so let's just say from conduit one this is an half inch emt the second one is a one inch emt the third is a two and a half inch and the last is a four inch so let's just say from the half inch to the one inch emt with an inch and a half in between, you want to find the spacing from center to center, okay? Because that's how you're going to get your parallel kicks with all of them be having 45 degree bends, <clears throat> okay? So that's what you want to find, basically. 
Okay, so now for the first one from center to center right here, okay, we have a 10 inch kick, then the second one is going to be a 12 and a quarter kick, okay, with having the maintaining the inch and a half in between, okay, don't forget. The, net, the third one would be 14 and 15 sixteenths of an inch and so on, 19 and 5 sixteenths. So if you're doing different size kicks, you want to keep the same, you know, uh, uh, spacing in between, okay? But you need to get the actual measurement between center to center, all right? <clears throat> and then what you're going to do is with these values... Let's just say the 12 and a quarter. Now with this 12 and a quarter, I'm going to multiply that by the by the uh, multiply for whatever degree bend I want. For this example, we're doing a 45 degree. So let's go ahead and do that calculation. We're going to do 12 and a quarter times 1.4 equals 17 and an eighth. So, so for this second conduit, the one inch conduit, I would go back 17 and an eighth and bend a 45 degree bend. Okay? And they'll all give me parallel kicks with nice spacings in between. Okay? But keep in mind that in the front here, okay, I am going to have different spacing as far as my sensors go. All right, the center will be different, but you're still going to maintain your inch and a half spacing in between. Okay, so it looks neater, it looks cleaner, and they are parallel. All right, so for the next one, the third one, same thing applies. 14 and 15 16 times the multiplier for the degree of bend that you want. In this case, it'll be a 45 degree bend. You get that value, you mark it from, you, you get your measurement from the back of the 90, and you mark it and you bend it at 45 at the center, okay? And that's basically it. In this diagram, it's showing you from center to center, but when you're actually taking your measurements, you can take them from, you know, the, the back to the side, I mean, whatever type of way that you take your measurements, okay? So... With that said, that's the last diagram that I have to show you, okay? I hope that this, you know, helped you out. On the next part, I am going to do some bends with hand benders, and I'm hoping that in the near future I can get you, uh, you know, doing some kicks on the hydraulic and the electric bender, okay? So, with that, let me move on to the next Okay, so one thing that I do want to express to you that <clears throat> maybe I didn't explain too well is that for the multipliers, okay, everything that we just went through as far as, you know, the multipliers for a 45, a 30, and a 60 degree bend, you know, the one thing that if you want to figure out the spacing for the actual front of the kick, and what I mean by the front of the kick, I mean by the actual where the 90 is, because we have two inch spacing in between, but if you want to know what the spacing is going to be towards the front, as far as going into the enclosure, okay, <clears throat> It's the same process, okay? So let's just go actually to the beginning. And here, we're doing a 30 degree bend. And as you can see, we have two inch spacing. So if you multiply, you know, two by the two inches, it's gonna give you four, four inches. So your spacing, as you can see here by the 90s and by the enclosure where the 90s are going down into the enclosure, it's four inch spacing in between. Okay, that's how you figure out the actual front part of your kick, okay, as you would say. And I'm showing you an example right here with this, you know, 
triangle here okay we have two inch spacing and the front part here is giving you a four inch spacing with the bend a 30 degree bend okay now if we go ahead and move forward a little bit and this is a little you know i just blew it up a little bit here and i went into more detail so that you can see by the enclosure okay you're gonna get a four inch spacing at the front if you're keeping two inch spacing in between your conduits from center to center okay <clears throat> now with that said moving right along as you can see they get closer okay with the 45 degree bend you have a 1.4 multiplier and you can figure it out the same it'll be 1.4 times 2 and that's going to give you the spacing that you see here okay now moving on a little, moving right along okay this one i believe is a typo the 5 16 is not supposed to be there i believe it's supposed to be 15 16 uh, either way i'm telling you it's a typo we could you know actually you know what i can do i could actually do the calculation for you right now and that's going to be two times two in spacing times 60 degree bend would be 1.155 okay and that's going to roughly give you about two and three eighths okay two and three eighths which i guess you know it's it's just about right okay so actually that is correct it's gonna be five sixteenths that's correct so two and five sixteenths <clears throat> i apologize for that anyhow as you can see as the degrees start getting you know bigger towards the front of your kick they start getting a little narrower inside you know so you can get you can actually fit it into a smaller box or whatever the case may be this doesn't necessarily have to be a box you could be going into uh um another coupling or you could be continuing on or you could be going through a a hole or an obstruction whatever the case may be this is how you figure out your spacing towards the front okay just so that you realize you know you know what the spacing is going to be in the front you can calculate that you know that you don't have to guess or or be stumped about it you know so if you're keeping two inch spacing that's what your spacing is going to be towards the front and and it and it works out for almost anything if you want to keep six inch spacings in between it still works out the same way you know you use the multiplier for 60 let's just say these are four inch conduits and you want to do six inch spacings from center to center okay so we'll do six times 1.155 okay and it's going to give you six and seven eighths pretty much towards the front of your kick so that'll be your spacing towards the front okay anyhow i wanted to express that because i didn't think i went into too much detail as far as the front part of your your uh, kicks that's how you calculate what that's gonna end up being okay <clears throat> because let's just say you kick them you're kicking them all and you want to know what where they're gonna land in the front that's how you figure out where they're gonna land in the front you know you can do the calculation and you'll know what the spacing is gonna be as far as where your 90s are okay so you have two inch spacing in between all of your conduits from center to center but when it comes down to where the 90s are you'll know what the exact spacing is gonna be there okay so i just wanted to go into more detail with that and as far as this last one here goes we already explained it okay being that they're all different size you have to actually figure out what the actual outside diameter is of the conduits and then measure them from center to center okay just like we spoke about like this one here is going to be 12 and a quarter from 
center to center from your first conduit okay now now all you have to do is just basically find out what the what the measurement is going to be from center to center and then you'll be able to calculate uh, i have them all written here <clears throat> so that you can find that out and as you can see we already calculated them and we have what the spacing is going to be for the front part of your 90s okay so our spacing is different for each one okay so in that case i already calculated them here but when you're dealing with different size conduits that's what you want to do if you want to find out what the spacing is going to be in the front <clears throat> or the only thing you're going to have to do is just measure the the spacing from center to center for whichever one you want to you know figure out if i wanted to figure out the spacing between the half inch and the one inch i measure that and then i times it by my multiplier for I, for this one here it's a 45 and then i'll figure out what the spacing is going to be for those two conduits okay and there you go so that's basically it i just wanted to you know delve into that a little more and let you know as far as you know the spacing for the front of the 90s is again thank you and please like share subscribe tell your friends give me more ideas for videos if you have any video requests you can email me or you can contact me at facebook at homes law any one of the social medias that you see um i'll be posting them on the description on just uh you know just shoot me any requests that you have all right this is Holmes Law. Once again, thank you for watching.